Hello! Hello and welcome to Live with Lava Submersible and my good buddy, MS Paint Trash, is joining us today. You want to say hey? Hey, everybody. Oh, yes. Hey, everybody. It's me, <laughs> MS Paint Trash. Or Ronnie. And, uh, yeah, this is welcome to a very special episode. Um, I am going to be drawing with... My old buddy, Ronnie, uh, on Aggie.io, it's going to be, oh, yeah, uh, just a unique experience. I don't, I've never done this one before, uh, so, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a fun, it'll be a fun time. Uh, thank you for joining us, but yeah, uh, I'm just going to start cleaning up my intro letters. I have to undo everything one, like, little by little. <laughs> Not going to let me undo anymore. I have to find an eraser. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, this is going to be a blast. Um, so, Ronnie, uh, how long have you been doing MS Paint Trash? Because I can't remember the first time I saw one of uh, your memes. Um, I've been doing, or at least posting on the page, probably since 2016. Dang. I would say. Yeah. I think that's when Was... I first got started. And was like the uh, the election part of the driving force behind you wanting to make gadget prop? <laughs> I'm sure that played a little bit into it, but uh, I was like seeing like what like friends were doing online, and uh, I'm friends with uh, teenage stepdad, and I've known him like for a long time since like my like the MySpace days. So like wow. he, I think I would say he's like the the guy that kind of really inspired me to start making like doofy art on the internet. That's awesome. So y'all met on MySpace? Yeah. Uh, you know, my friend Dean, like he, uh, he was friends with uh teenage stepdad um, on MySpace. Cause he used to have a band called aimless J and the lacklusters and, uh, Dean introduced me to them, and I liked them a lot. And I don't know, we were just we would message each other on MySpace sometimes. Okay. And somehow we just kind of kept a online friendship going for fifteen years or so. Yeah. That's awesome. Um. Yeah, that's great. Because those kinds of relationships, especially like can be uh f so fleeting oh yeah definitely it's... I don't know. Um, so he's a cool guy uh so i'm I'm curious uh because your meme page has a very very specific uh not just aesthetic but um your messaging is always really really awesome and, and wild and radical um I just like I'm very curious where a lot of these ideas come from like the uh, you know I should say I was going to say earlier in the intro just content warning this whole episode there's probably going to be talk about doo doo and pee pee and puke and uh, <laughs> all kinds of other weird stuff uh, in more graphic detail than you probably want at the moment but uh, if you're in it <laughs> yeah viewer discretion <laughs> very advised um but uh, discretion advised. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the 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 one that oh man, the one that I'll never forget is uh, the one where you put it, it was like diarrhea in the crock pot. <laughs> <laughs> um, that that will never fade in my memory. It's one of the most deep fried, wildest memes I've ever seen, and every person I've ever showed it to is just uh. A little bit, uh, just like not sure even how to take it. Like, where is this coming <laughs> from? Um, and and that's uh, it's. <laughs> yes, please. Go on. Or uh, keep going. Yeah, no, I mean, but a lot of your work does um, find its home in that kind of world, and th especially the way that your aesthetic style kind of um, fits into that. Like, where's a lot of this come from for you?
I think I just have like a very kind of absurdist sense of humor. I, as I make memes, but I kind of hate memes at the same time. So like my memes are making fun of memes in a sense. But um, a lot of my, like the concepts of the memes that I make come from inside jokes between friends and I. Oh, well, we're drawing. I'm just throwing a little uh, flesh tone butterfly in here, I guess. I, my brain just started wandering while you were chatting. Because, yeah, I, I, I love um, that. It does have that feeling, though, of like an inside joke. So, uh, actually, is that like uh, a lot of those jokes kind of workshopped with uh, the crew that does Gabin with the Goofies, the, the podcast that you guys do? It's kind of like uh, like we're just hanging out and we're just kind of going off the cuff, like making a joke. And like the way we joke a lot of the time is uh, we're just kind of like creating like an entire, it's hard to describe, but it's like we're just kind of creating an elaborate st- story within a joke. Or yeah, and uh Um, Riffing, yeah, improvising. Uh, yes, uh, it's basically just jokes. Uh, we're just kind of like the things that make us laugh the most is like I'll like focus on something and then that'll just become a meme. Or like in my podcast, uh, a lot of my memes are just jokes ripped off from that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And and your style is so distinct. I mean, everybody who's watching you draw right now is probably uh, at least a little curious how you're achieving this, uh, the line weight and things like that. So, I know, but why don't you tell the audience? Wait, what do you want to know? Oh, so what, uh, what tools do you use to create your memes? What are you uh, drawing with right now? Oh. Uh, I, I mean, I, all of my memes are made on MS Paint, and that's why it looks the way it does. I don't really know how to use, like, Photoshop or anything like that, so I just kind of, I'm kind of, like, I guess, self-taught on a crappy level. <laughs> <laughs> and you use, uh, you use a mouse for all your drawings or clip art, things like that. You know, you, yeah. you don't have a tablet. You're working directly off of your, your, your machine. Oh, yeah. I'm just uh, using a desktop, and I'm using a mouse, and it's very uh, kind of, what's the word? Not monotonous, but it's, uh, it takes patience, especially when you're, like, animating. It, interesting. I, I just absolutely love the aesthetic. It, uh, the... Yeah, I won't draw a... Yes. <laughs> I'll put a pair of pants. <laughs> I absolutely uh, love watching this come together. This is such a treat. I've been I've been following your meme page since its inception then, uh since twenty sixteen. And it's one of my favorite things. So it's 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 genuinely a treat for me to watch you draw <laughs> right now. Uh I love, you know, uh that aesthetic. I love I, as you well know, I uh, I love punk music and the aesthetic of just like grimy, nasty, dirty things. Yeah, um, you know, it's something that I think we both are very passionate about, and you can see that in uh, uh, how I mean, we both love uh, improvising as well, and I think that's why uh, it's always so much fun when we get to work on uh, different things together. We've collaborated a number of times over the years uh, on movies and things like that and yeah that that was actually uh our first like real connection was realizing we were both absolute nerds about movies we were in a 
I think we, me, you and I had like an economics class or a history class or something together. And we were like randomly uh, paired in a group or something. Oh, and, I remember. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And then we were just like <laughs> making stupid jokes and talking about Pulp Fiction and movies that I liked. Yeah. And, and we grew up in a place that was uh, more rare, I think, than <laughs> in other places. Uh, when you met someone who had a, a, what is in our culture, fairly common interest, but where we grew up uh, in Reading is, uh, you know, this high refined culture, uh, you know, looking down on, <laughs> on yeah. so many people and their opinions. It's uh, basically the rodeo is the only kind of culture that Reading has. <laughs> Yes, uh, it's a great way to put it. Um, so when I found out that that was something you were really into, that you had like these, um, this love for art, you know, I was like, oh, okay, I, I, I've got to be friends with this person. <laughs> um, and yeah, that was that was, and then eventually, um, you met Zach, and we started making movies uh, occasionally together, and working with you is always like. One of those things that I cherish because you uh, were so talking here. about I've... <laughs> just Thanks, uh, us making. Uh, I don't know. Those are just like some of my favorite times ever. Is just us making like those little, like going to French Gulch and making our little western film. Oh, what a hustle! What a day! I it's one of my favorite memories. Yeah. Um, I don't think we've actually talked a lot about this on my stream before. So, yeah, when me and Ronnie were probably 18, 19, right after we graduated high school, or was this a little older? No, yeah, um, we must have been 20 or so by then. Well, you moved to Santa Rosa. Oh, wait. Oh, you came. No, wait, that's right. You came up for the, I think, all of the movies that we made together. I think, yeah, because you started making stuff with Zach um, basically, yeah. I think, after I moved out of uh, Reading. But I would come back. So I think the Western was Zach was either, yeah, he was planning on moving down to Santa Rosa, um, but hadn't left yet. And we had to make the one final, <laughs> the one final movie that would turn out to be, like, not even close to the final movie uh, before, before Zach left. Um, and we found this little bar that had been operating since, like, 18-something uh, that just was, like, the perfect Western bar, you know? Um, we lied <laughs> to the people who owned it. was like, you know, we're from the Shasta College Historical Society or some shit. Um, <laughs> can we use your bar to shoot for the day? And... This dude basically just hand waved. It was like, sure, we don't care. Um, and you know, there was two dudes there that looked like they lived there, and <laughs> just sitting at the bar, randomly talking about penny weights. And I don't know if like uh, they were putting on a show for us, or if that's just the talks they normally had. And neither would surprise me. I... But we <laughs> go ahead. No, I think. Uh... A little from column A and a little from column B. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, and we shot in that little bar in the area around in... Um, God, what did you say? Lake... What was it? French, French Gulch. Gulch. Yeah. Uh, and around the town of French Gulch for, you know, the entire time the sun was up, basically. Um, and just those... <laughs> Those moments of uh, being able to improvise together, um, just some of my favorite moments as an actor. Uh, really, I've always loved improvising, but it's 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 rare when you find somebody who does it like almost by nature, and you have this kind of like natural sensibility with it, or maybe you've just practiced and practiced and practiced it. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know, because the way that you are able to riff on stuff <laughs> is like nobody I, I, I've ever worked with. That's uh, kind of you to say. I feel like I'm a terrible improviser, but... You're really thoughtful, is the thing. Um, you know, like, that's why you and Darren were the perfect casting for... Oh, man, do you remember the names? Frau and oh. something else? Frau and Fort. The Frau and Fort twins. Yeah. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. Uh, the Frauenfort twins. When you and Darren both played the uh, exploited ladies of Big Babies. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, for Maybe. Detective Scoop Schetti, Dick for Hire. Uh, cutting that scene... Uh, editing the, what we had from that shoot was some of the most fun. Like, I mean, shooting the movie, absolutely, 100%. But, like, I've never laughed more in my life than sitting there <laughs> and reviewing all of the footage and just realizing that because we had only shot, like, half the movie, I was going to have to riff this entire thing in the editing room um, and just make something out of it, you know? Um, it was... I just died every moment, especially you and Ross and Darren. That scene. <sighs> Ross is probably my favorite person to improvise with. Yeah. No, you and Ross have a chemistry that that Zach uh, would take advantage of any time he could because you guys work together so well. You have a similar... Uh, uh, a similar, th I mean, not a similar thing, like, but you riff our, really well. Yeah, I, I mean, our I, our sense of, our like delivery, or like our joke delivery or line deliveries are both pretty dry. So, and I you think, both like, love yeah. that idea of absurdism. Yeah, 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 and and a lot of your yeah. Um, <laughs> um that that shoot was one of the wildest times um so what do you remember about that shoot because i'm i'm very curious i don't know how much we even have talked about it of uh, scoop of sketty yeah Ooh. uh let's see here <laughs> the I mainly remember uh, Hayden, your brother. Um, wasn't he wearing a big diaper? Yeah, I mean one of one of the things I had to cut together was literally I don't remember who was holding the camera, but it, I was sitting there like my brother, completely belligerently drunk, um, lying on the floor, rolling around with me like, wrestling this giant sheet onto his crotch. He was wearing pants, don't worry. Uh, but, you know, I'm sitting there trying to get this, this big sheet to work as a diaper for my, my six-foot-three brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I must have had, like, three minutes of that footage because it was too much. It, I think in the, the footage you have that that I sent you the link to a while ago, I think has a blooper reel that has a lot of that footage left in it that I didn't keep in the movie um, because of the way that it was uploaded. Um, but yeah, that is a really, really... So it was my 25th birthday. We had kind of like... I touched base with all these different people that I had worked with over the years um, from different parts of my life. And I was like, I want to make a movie for my birthday. Um, and everyone was like, yeah, this sounds dope. Uh, what's the idea? I had come up with this weird detective story that was like, um, you know, this, uh, the mob boss was a big baby. Um, he was exploiting sex workers and uh, running drugs. And he had an in at the police department, one of the senior staff. And... Um, Ronnie plays multiple characters in this movie, um, both the, the good detective uh, partner of the bad detective, 
and the uh, the aforementioned uh, sex worker who uh, was being exploited by Big Baby. And um, <laughs> I just remember everybody getting to the house and we were I'll be careful how I put this. Uh, we decided <laughs> there was going to... So there was an extra element. I'll just say there was an extra element involved in the production that was unforeseen uh, by myself. And as soon as it showed up, it was like, okay, okay, this is going to be a really interesting shoot. I've never done this before. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I honestly, like, knowing all of the material and where everyone was at in their lives and everything that was going on, like around the point of the shoot, like it contributed such a vibe to the actual footage that we have. Um, the it's, it is, um, (laughs) (laughs) it's an element of it that, especially for Ross's character, I think is super evident just in how he's playing it. It was like part of Ross going kind of method for the role. (laughs) I could see, yeah. Oh man. Um, what, what a party, what a shoot. Um, and then of course, we were all too partied out after the shoot, uh, after the first night of shooting for there to be any more shooting. It was like, all right, we're, we're done now. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm already kind of thinking, how am I going to put this together? How am I going to put this together? But ended up being one of my absolute favorite things we've ever made. Um, but yeah, um, so we talked about uh, MS Paint Trash a little bit. Uh, we talked a little bit about Gavin with the Goofies. Did you want to uh, talk a little bit more about Gavin? That's uh, my uh, very stupid podcast that I have with two of my friends. Uh, it's like, I don't know, like nobody listens to it, but uh, it's just really kind of absurdist uh I don't know, we're kind of like playing characters in a sense. It's just all completely improvised. How often uh, do y'all record those episodes? Ooh. Um, when we first started, we were doing like one a week, but for like a few weeks. And then uh, life happens and then like jobs and having to move to a new place and stuff. So... Like, it started to be, like, a once-a-month kind of thing, or whenever we can get to get around to doing it. But now it's... Uh, we're lucky if we make, like, two episodes a year. Just work and all that stuff, getting in the way kind of stuff? Yeah. And also, it's, like, because we're improvising uh, everything from scratch, and, like, we're kind of, like, creating the arc of whatever the story is uh as we're going like and we're like not trained improvisers or comedians or anything like that um so a lot of it's just us crashing and burning um (laughs) and then i edit all that out oh wow so you do you do the editing as well yeah i edit it all i do all the editing that's my favorite part yeah, I like editing a lot too, a lot more than I uh, than I thought I would. But I, suppose, I mean, maybe a little bit uh, like selfishly, you know, as an actor, it, it does give you a certain amount of like understanding of how your performance could be completely other than what you delivered. You know, um, editors have an insane amount of power when you think about it, um, and I wouldn't have realized that if I had never edited before. Oh, like you're, I think, uh, it's kind of like with movies, like they say, like a movie gets made three times in its entire production. Like when it's written, then when it's directed or like during the filming process. And then when it's edited, because yeah, editing could just change the entire, uh, 
story or narrative. Of, yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, a good editor can really make or break a movie, or whatever you're you're editing from. It's, uh, yeah. It's just it's interesting from um. All of the. Uh, periods of my life where I've been put on this or put in that, and like, you know, sometimes you wonder, like, what what could this have been like if I uh, <laughs> if this performance was edited a little bit differently or that performance, and like, sometimes it's like, you know, I feel bad, like, oh, maybe I I'm not doing my job right, but um, you know, it's like it's nice to have the perspective that there's like this whole other world kind of controlling what you do, which honestly gave me a lot of ability to, to like kind of uh, understand better, like a lot of the uh, terrible performances by really great actors and like how those could have manifested. In a number of ways that beyond their control. Oh, Yes. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um. So, do you have any episodes coming out soon? Uh, we're talking about recording, but uh, we've been kind of talking about that for a while now. Um. I'm sure we'll probably record one when within the next two months, um, and that'll probably. I think that's going to be the first episode that we've released this whole year. Oh man, I can't wait! But uh, I I'm exciting. a big fan. <laughs> oh, thank you. I think it's a a really funny podcast, and I wish more people listened to it. Yeah. I I also really love absurdism and absurdist humor. Is there like um like certain influences you pull from, like uh, in pop culture, comedians or um, even musicians, like, things like that? I mean, like Tim and Eric are like a huge, are probably like the biggest ones at this point. They kind of they're the ones who kind of ushered in like just absurdist comedy on like a main uh, maybe not mainstream but like on a brought it into like the forefront yeah made it a uh, part of pop culture definitely i mean yeah. i mean eric made like commercials you know the tino's thing was like one of their biggest like how do you, how do you miss it you know and then uh I don't know. Uh, Conan O'Brien, like his uh, old late night TV show, was uh, always very like absurd and silly, and just constantly went off the rails. And that was something that I think influenced my sense of humor quite a bit. Interesting, interesting. Um, I'm a, a big fan of like uh, a lot of like. I would love to see a movie with, like, uh, a lot of the kind of new wave of absurdist uh, humor. Like, there's there's been such a, like, wealth of talent that kind of comes from this world of alternative styles of humor that, you know, have made it into kind of more mainstream culture. Like, uh, Richard Iwade or James Acaster. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Eric Andre. The, Eric Andre, absolutely. Nathan Fielder, you know, like it would be fantastic to see all of these like really different but very interesting people like work on a feature together or something like that, you know, just cast everyone and then you think they're because they've been talking about doing more seasons of the Mighty Boosh for a while, but it's been pretty quiet. Um, what do you, what do you think? It, are you hopeful that they're gonna get more? We're gonna get more episodes of the Mighty Boosh before we die. <laughs> um, I, I honestly, I'm, I maybe only seen two episodes of the Mighty Boosh, so I'm 
not qualified to oh, really? make that. Yeah. So you, uh, I'm assuming the old Greg episode is one of them. Uh, yes, absolutely. Because that, that's when I, that's how I know of the Mighty Boosh. Me as well. Yeah, that was my introduction. But uh, my partner got me, like, they have the box set. They got me super into the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm now a, an official fan. And there's, like, I mean, even a lot of uh, really talented people doing similar kind of, like, absurdist humor on uh, YouTube. It, you know, it's it's a... In a way, you know, kind of like this, a, an interesting way to look at art history. If you look at like the Dada movement, or even other movements of like kind of outsider radical art and how they took off, when you compare them to where we're at culturally with that style or that kind of um, art, um, you know, it's simultaneously mainstream, but. Um, but outside of it, you know, it, it kind of holds this this strange status because many people know of like, um, you know, Eric Andre or Tim and Eric, um, but there's not like a um, a cultural kind of backing, you know, that's kind of like like in a lot of those periods of art history where we did see like it kind of switch up the culture. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just rambled for a minute without a point. Um, <laughs> um, what, uh, I don't know, like, is that something that um, you think is due to kind of like uh, the corporate influence or social media? Do you think, like, do you have a theory on where that might come from? Like, why this, um, you know, there is all of this very radical art being made, but... Um, a lot of what does make it into mainstream culture is a little bit, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, feel, I don't know. I feel like the average person doesn't like absurdist comedy or they, they can't wrap their heads around it. And maybe people who, maybe this is my theory or I think I've heard Conan O'Brien talk about this, but to be a comedian or to kind of like dedicate your life to telling jokes or being funny or whatever, like there's got to be a part of you that's uh, insane to a degree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I feel that. Um, because it does delve into like some uh, the the part of absurd absurdism that I love is that it gives you all of uh, like a very wide spectrum of emotions. You could be laughing one moment and frightened for your life the next. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's you know going through those kinds of uh, or experiencing that kind of transformation. Um, in media is something that I, I think is a really powerful kind of message, you know? Um, like, and we see this even in like, uh, the, the films of like David Lynch and things like that, where even like, um, like Twin Peaks really did the, the most recent season. I still haven't seen it, honestly, but, um, the, oh, no. I know, I know. Everybody loved it, though, you know? Um, it was a cultural uh, kind of phenomenon for a minute. Quint quintessential David Lynch. Yeah, and it's interesting um, <clears throat> how that pops off, especially considering, like, knowing what David Lynch's aesthetic and the way that he tells stories and the way that he delivers information as an artist, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's interesting to see, like, stuff like that really just pop off. Um, even Nathan Fielder's most recent show, The the Rehearsal. Um, oh, yeah. You know, do definitely seems to be doing uh, fairly well, at least in my own little social media bubble. It's, uh, every episode that came out, there was a, a flurry of activity around it on, like, Twitter, you know? 
Did you ever I, see that movie, Cynic Ducky, New York? The Charlie Kaufman movie? No, I haven't. Okay. Well, the rehearsal is kind of like that. Um, explaining Cynic Ducky, New York is kind of impossible, but it's... I don't know. It's, it's kind of mind-blowing what Nathan Fielder's doing right now. Yeah. Yeah, I 100% agree. That show, every episode of it was so uh, uh, it's, I want to say like real, um, but that's obviously the most opposite end of the spectrum from what it actually is. Um, but I think, yeah, it's, it's interesting that that's where my brain's going because the way that the show is presented is just so um, professional. You know, thinking about, like, I did, I was an actor as a kid, and thinking about, like, the process of being put through auditions and callbacks and then getting a job where you're playing somebody's kid with all of these levels of essentially what is levels of deception involved as well. Like, you know, you're not playing their kid. That's ultimately your role, but there's like this other background motivation that your character, you know, you're a child and this is, you know, kind of what you're getting talked through. Not to mention the, all of the kind of like stuff that goes on behind the scenes. I am fascinated to know what that kid that like wanted that, that focused on one of the, I think it was the second to last July, but last episode, spoilers, uh, where the kid started calling Nathan daddy and wanted Nathan oh, to be yeah. his father. Dude, that tore me apart. Like, in a genuine way, I was like, fuck, that's, that's exactly, my life could have been exactly that. <laughs> my life could have been that fucked up. Um, and, you know, I, I went through my shit, but that's, that's, a, that's a heavy burden for, what was he, six? I think he was five. I yeah that, yeah, that was heartbreaking to watch. Yeah, and I just I you know I'm curious. Like I know that on Nathan for you, there was a heavy amount of like, um, kind of like manipulating the audience's perception. Like there was the episode um, where he did the high wire thing. Um, well. Most of those people were found on casting sites and, um, like, had elements of, had details that were presented to us like they didn't know them, but obviously they knew there was, there's something else going on. Um, they didn't, of course, know the full story. Uh, I think there's a really good account, like a Reddit thread or something like that from the, I think your name was Angela, the romantic interest for that episode. Yeah, uh, the... The strange uh, Christian lady. <laughs> oh, uh, I can't remember if she was Christian, but oh, God, yeah, maybe that's anyway. Let's uh, get a new canvas up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I realized a minute ago I couldn't draw on top of uh, uh, the square you're working on at the moment. So let's do it. I really love this, though. And this is just kind of like a free association drawing, right? Yes. Like you're not... <laughs> yeah. It's so, it's so intense. It, um, well, tilting for you, too? Huh? Is the image tilting for you, too? No. Okay, never mind. I'm just wondering what kind of powers I have. <laughs> well, the audience... I haven't told the audience yet, but uh, you guys know that I am locked out of any other layer. I have one layer that I get to work on at the moment. <laughs> so, um... Oh, okay. Let's uh, see here. I, I know what to do. Whoops. Okay, maybe I don't. There should be a hide option in the uh, in the layers. It 
I think is on, it's the big scroll thing that comes over on the right side of the screen, um, under the uh, uh, tools. Oh, I'm on mobile, right? I, it's probably going to look different for you. Oh. oh! There we go. There we go. All right. Um, so, um, yes, we've talked a little bit about Redding, but I feel like um, it's such an interesting topic. I want to... I want to talk a little bit more about that if uh, if you're interested. Yeah. So part of this podcast or this live stream, rather. Lance, uh, how do I scroll over? My like uh, canvas is on the far. Oh, dude! I don't know. I I'm pinching and pushing because <laughs> I'm on mobile. Um, okay. No, I got it. I figured okay. it out. Uh, but yeah, you, uh, grew up in writing. I moved there pretty young, but you, uh, lived there, you, not your whole life, because you were born... No, I, I grew up in, in Southern LA? California, or in, like, the, down in, like, the San Diego area. San Diego, Like, okay. I lived down, yeah, I lived down there until I was, like, 14. Oh, okay. That's right, okay. Um, and, so you experienced reading basically from high school like starting in high school then huh yes did yeah, you I go to there... cb the whole time um yes yes yeah I, that's where i lived so that was like the only high school so um let, let's let's talk about it you know um I, I've talked about it multiple times with Zach and with Ryan. Uh, Redding's got a very weird cult. Oh, yeah, Bethel. Yeah. Um, and over the last few years, they've slowly just kind of been buying up the town. Yeah, uh, there's uh, a whole like Facebook group dedicated to which businesses are owned by Bethel and which ones aren't. Yeah, I used to be a part of that, but it got it got kind of weird in there, so I bounced. But <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> um it if like if I lived there, I probably would just like deal with it because it's important to know that kind of stuff. Um it's you know, um multiple people uh that I know and I'm sure you know as well, uh you know, experience some pretty Messed up stuff uh, because of that church uh, growing up. Uh, do you encounter many uh, Bethel people uh, up there? Um. Oh yeah. I mean. Um. I mean, they're everywhere. I mean, I half of my coworkers are Bethel people. So, have you uh, ever been faith healed? <laughs> Um, I've had people like, whoops, uh, I've had people, uh, kind of like, or like try to like, or even while I'm like working or whatever, um, people like coming up being like really friendly and like, kind of like disar in a, like in a disarming kind of way. And, uh, to the point where you're like, oh, this person's actually kind of cool. And then, uh, then all of a sudden they'll like, uh say something like can i pray for you and then like you're they're in a position of power in a sense because they're the customer or whatever and i don't know it's sometimes it's uncomfortable to say no i've i've stood around while bethel people prayed for me <laughs> Yeah, because that was one of the, I mean, I had, I had known some, uh, I know people who had individual experiences with individual people uh, from the church that was in private homes that was, you know, tough to talk about. Um, I don't want to get into now, but I also know that in the last couple of years, there's been a couple of people who 
uh, were severely injured or passed away because the church uh, members of the church were more interested in trying to faith heal them than call a hospital or something like that. Well, there's that one story where, uh, uh, like it was like a younger person, like probably like 20 or something, but, uh, they, uh, I don't know where they were, but they, the person from Bethel pushed the other guy or person off a cliff and, uh, basically got away with it. But yeah, they they did pay the entire police department salary one year, right? Oh, I think they do that uh, every year. Or uh, they oh, donate okay. a lot of money. Very, um, very healthy. But yeah, that person was like trapped at like the bottom of the cliff or the wherever uh, for like a few days, I think. And um, the Bethel person was saying like they thought they were going to save them by like praying for them or they wanted to like test their magical powers or whatever right yeah it's super scary stuff um so so there's bethel and that's something that you know i you know i think about all the time especially thinking about the housing market there and kind of the the um uh, the faith healing obviously is really scary. The uh, whole like Harry Potter style like um, uh, school of magic or whatever that they have there. There's so much weird <laughs> stuff that goes on there. It's so wild that to think that you know it's in California and nobody really knows that there's this giant cult pulling people in from across the globe. Messing up the housing market in this tiny community, um, you know, it's 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 pretty wild. I just I like to make a point of talking about it often as I can because it's so weird how few people know. Even if you live in California, how few people know that uh, this exists, you know. <clears throat> and there, uh, but- uh, there's that one guy who like is associated with like Bethel music. Uh, what's his name, Sean? Uh, I can't remember how his last name is pronounced, but it's Sean, like, Freud or something. But he's, like, the guy who's, like, uh, like, doing those, like, weird, like, prey tours uh, during, like, COVID and, uh, like, the right to pray or whatever. And they would, like, have, like, massive gatherings where, like, hundreds and hundreds of people were just, like, singing songs and shit. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. Um, very cool people. Oh, yeah. He was like on uh, Steve Bannon's uh, podcast. Um, yeah, these yeah. people are weird. Yeah, and I was going to say, I mean, this is, uh, this is troubling, but even more troubling knowing kind of where Redding sits. It sits in a very Republican, very far right Republican district of California. Um, And growing up, I mean, just about anybody who lived there knew that this is a a place where an inordinate amount of white supremacists live, I guess. Oh, yeah, there's a. There's a lot here. Uh, I feel like this is happening everywhere, but like. uh, Like recently, we've had like like anti-Semitic kind of like flyers popping up in, like, people's driveways. Damn. Wow. Uh, so this is, like, something that the the paper's reporting on, or just, like, people are talking about on social media? Uh, it was... There There was, like, a group... Or I'm in a Facebook group, and, like, people were, po- like, posted... Uh, or were posting about it, and, like, everyone was telling them to, like, report it to the, the police for, like, because it's like illegal or it's a, a hate crime essentially. Um, but uh, then the local police made a statement about it and how they were quote unquote taking it seriously and looking for like information or whatever that 
help them find whoever's doing it, I guess. Yeah. I don't know if and anything, I don't, yeah, or I, I don't know if anything's, like, come up of it since. Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird going to a high school, you know you're going to be um, in a class with a bunch of Nazis. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm, uh, my dad's Lebanese, so, you know, I just remember freshman year, uh, the the day in September happens, I don't know if Twitch have problems with me saying that day. I don't know. I don't want to risk it. Point is, uh, yeah, that day in September, um, it was really weird uh, in the classroom because no teachers, uh, no students uh, were restrained from using any kind of language they wanted to talk about uh, people in the Middle East that day. It was kind of like unrestricted racism day. And I got to know oh, a lot yeah, of my yeah. classmates and a lot of my teachers much, much better that day. And who I needed to pretend <laughs> in front of and to stay yeah. safe. I think I, I, now that you've like brought that up, uh, I kind of had like the same experience. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, Definitely just seemed like what our how our school handled it. Um basically just a Yeah. I I kinda wish my mom had told me to stay home that day, but um in a lot of ways I'm I'm glad that she was so white she didn't think about it. Um and also uh that I got to know who I could trust there, because this is my freshman year. Um and you know, uh high school was a you know, I was pretty recently uh, into high school put on Adderall and my dosage in high school kept rising and rising, especially freshman, freshman year. Um, so I was not in the best state of mind just generally. <laughs> yeah. uh, especially things were going on at home. That wasn't great, but um, high school was a really scary time, uh, especially realizing a lot of the real world aspects that you have to realize. Um, or that many people come to realize in that period of their life, you know, um, a lot of people's political opi uh, political opinions start coming out, being more open, um, start learning more about them, you know, more people to bounce off of. Um, so yeah, I just it was, yeah, in a way I am glad, <laughs> but in another way I wish, uh, you know. It might have been better for my, my mental health just generally to have stayed home. I don't know. Um, oh, got a little xenomorph going? Yeah. I love it. Okay. All right. So, um... Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've worked together as performers uh, multiple times, as we were saying earlier. But uh, it's really interesting. We never did any plays together in high school. And a lot of the time, in hindsight, I'm like, damn, why was not Ronnie auditioning? You know, um, was there, I can't remember, if, was there a reason that you were kind of like, you didn't want to get involved in theater? Uh, I just wasn't really like inch. At that moment in time, I wasn't really... I guess I'm still not, like... I've never, like, been... Well, I guess to get more to the point, I have, like, a terrible, uh, like, stage fright kind of... Uh, I don't like being in front of, like, a lot of people performing. And that's... I think that kind of, like, scared me off of doing that and I probably would have liked it a lot if I gave it a try but I yeah I think I was just too afraid damn okay <laughs> what oh <laughs> uh, yeah um um well I'm really glad that eventually <laughs> you did find uh yourself performing because you 
like I said, you know, you're one of my favorite people to work with. And I think um, your approach to comedy is something that I, I think is uncommon. Um, you've got a great mind for it, which is why we're getting a xenomorph pooping. Yeah, that's a pretty high, or it's pretty highbrow stuff. Yeah, you know, straight up. Only a, uh, only a comedic genius could come up with. <laughs> come I up agree. With Wholeheartedly, I agree. Absolutely. Um, a rare mind of comedy. Um, Xenomorphs have to poop sometime. They do. Um, and I'm I'm personally pretty glad that it uh, is still like, you know, brown. Because it could very well be just more acid, you know? Whoa. Can you imagine if instead of, like, poop, it was acid? That would be bad. Because then they could just poo at you. Like, they would be like, you know, the the zoo apes that throw the doo-doos at you. Yeah. But, you know, also... uh, Or, like, skunks spraying. Yeah, but the spray will kill you. Or even (laughs) cats. Cats can spray uh, gross uh, skunk-like smells, too. That's a good point. I, I'm i very uh, glad I've never had a cat spray me. That would be not my favorite day. And I, or my favorite cat. There's a skunk that lives under my house. There actually might be a lot of critters that live under my house. You know, it's it's something I uh, even even here in like you know the middle of LA basically. Um, I still like the other morning. I woke up like probably like five six a.m. I wake up stupid early, anxiety, all that stuff. It's fun. Um, I, I woke up super early. The entire <laughs> what? That's when I get up. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so. But my entire apartment smelled like skunk. And I, it was bewildering because I, like I said, I'm in the middle of LA. I don't, occasionally I'll see like a possum and that's like a big deal to me. So I, and I guess, you know, they're similar sizes. You know, if one can be here, the other can be. But it's just like, you know, I've lived here for three years now. First time I ever smelled a skunk down here. At least in my apartment. It was like, my cats had pit, or my my roommate's cats technically, uh, had pissed off the skunk outside and it like sprayed its ass in the apartment. <laughs> like it was awful. It was like you know it was there most of the morning. I grabbed some cat's incense, <laughs> lit those bad boys up, um, tried to uh, cleanse the apartment. You know, I'm, I. You know, I'm I'm so uh, cityfied now. I don't know if I'd, I'd I don't know if I'd last in Reading. I would love to get out of here, but here I stay. Yeah, it's until it's until. Things are scary or whatever, but we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> when, uh, you, uh, yeah, I know that it's something that you've been wanting to get out uh, for a while. It's it's something that uh, a lot of our friends that I we grew up with, you know, experience. Um, I'm super fortunate. You know, my dad lived in Sonoma County, and I just. I, I knew I had to get out, you know. I had known so many people who had graduated before me that were, like, in the theater department who just felt like, even just a couple years out, like, this city is a fucking trap. It's a black hole, and it will suck you in and keep you. Uh, and especially from, like, an outside perspective, it seems to have only gotten, like, that kind of, like, in a inequity, inequality in Reading, uh, especially economically, has only gotten like more widespread, more intense. Yeah, it's like 
it's been like a slow kind of like it's been slowly happening, but um Bethel has been like a big part of that. They're kind of like gentrifying Reading to a degree. Yeah, um like they're pulling people from all over the planet in, right? They had a program set up where like uh, they would fly right into the Bethel Air or the Reading Airport um, from like anywhere in the world or something. I I read about this a while ago. I might be a little fuzzy on the details. Um, I'm not I'm not familiar with it, but that sounds right to me. There, I mean, every, I I hear people with like kind of like British accents or like European accents a lot, and at this point, I just assume that they're all Bethel people. Yeah, it's like, it's a very strange, like, uh, body snatchers kind of thing, you know? Like, they're everywhere, and you'll never know until, like, uh, they, they start praying over your dying corpse. I, I have a good tell at this point, or... Sure, Basically, sure. Anyone, I mean, it, it sounds like sh like saying what my tell is almost sounds shitty, but if you lived here, you would understand. But, like, if someone's too nice or too friendly, um, they're likely a Bethel person. <laughs> <laughs> Name of the episode. <laughs> Bam. Yeah, no, that's... Uh... I definitely can see where you're coming from there. Uh, okay, two seconds. I'll be back. I just got to pee real quick. All righty. Oh, I, I need to draw. Drawing. Drawing. Okay. I'm trying to draw here, but it's not working. Yeah, it was acting funny for me too. This, it's a, you know, it's it's not the perfect thing, but I I love the fact that we can sit here and draw on the same canvas separated by most of the state of California. It's like one of those things, like, I, I don't know, I love stupid little novelty, little tech things like that. Like, the idea that I can call people and see their face when I talk to them is something that I'm... I, I'm still like an idiot child, just like, oh, science fictiony. <laughs> um, just little things like this that are just like, I don't know. I, I feel like maybe I give them too much importance. <laughs> uh, but I've also uh, had to move a lot uh, during the course of my life, and there's a lot of people like yourself that um, staying in touch with would have been impossible if I didn't have like social media and. Uh, Discord and things like this, you know, it's it's a really um really powerful thing to me. Like I just remember watching the Ninja Turtles, I think, as a kid, and like I remember um, April O'Neil was talking to that weird like blonde-haired boss guy. I can't remember his name. But um, her boss at the journalism store where they worked. Um, and uh, they were journalism talking. Store? Yeah, the journalism store. You know, you know the <laughs> thing. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they they were talking with the video. I just you know I just, it's one of those childhood memories that will just always stick with me. Just like, God damn, can't wait till that happens. That's that's gonna be so cool in the future. I hope. And now it's just like something that people avoid, and you're like, this motherfucker's video calling me right now. What the hell is wrong? With them? Oh yeah, that's me. Um, <laughs> video or just phone calls or video calls. Like if someone like calls me, um, better be good. That's all I'm gonna <laughs> say. Totally. Yeah. It's it's that's the um the. It's not an uncommon way to feel, you know? It's like, that's the norm. I'm a, a little weirdo that just, like, it's always such a, like, fantasy kind of thing that I never thought would happen, you know? Or I hoped would happen in my lifetime. It's like flying cars, you know? It's like, uh, at least in, in my little brain. Uh Ooh. Doing some lettering? Yeah. Drop a important message. <laughs> I was wondering where you were, where you were going. <laughs> oh, I love it. I live I'm bereft of it. ideas. Oh so no, this is a great this is idea. The thing. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is the best idea. This is my old standby. I want to. I'm gonna draw a little friend for your friend over here in the other corner. Yeah, I I like uh I like purple and green. They're good colors. I like lots of colors. Oh, I got a real pointy head. Oh, that works. I like this. Okay, we're gonna just draw into that. What's going on here? Am I under your layer? You're in front. Okay, cool. Or, whoops. Whatever you're drawing, I, or whoever you're drawing, I'm going to put his arm around him. Ah. They're friends. I love it. Oh. What happened there? I want a dark color. Does that look dark to you guys, or is that, like, yellow? Um, yeah, it's good. Cool. It blends in with the purple on my computer screen, at least. I'm trying to find, like, just a regular black. And for some reason, it's like, no, we're not going to let you do that. Sorry. Let me try something. No, nope, that didn't help. What this? Nope. So weird. Try the pencil tool. See if that helps. Nope. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder what's going on there. You know what? We'll try it. Nope. I've had to refresh a few times when my uh, drawing tool wasn't working. Okay, let's give that a shot.
<laughs> oh, oh, okay, yeah. I love it. <laughs> I do, I do. Is there a... Is there like a text thing? Oh, I don't think there is a text tool. Well, that'll do. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, no. Oh, it's perfect. I gotta throw some little teeth in there at the bottom now. I want to shrink the in this house text, but I can't figure out how to deselect this big uh, selection I have. <laughs> yeah, I. I... The, the Aggie.io is a little bit of a mystery to me still I uh, I see the like select tool but I don't know how to use it I oh um, that uh, sliding panel on the what's on the right side of my screen does have a, a deselect and select all button okay I think I figured it out okay tight 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 oh Full of handsome dudes. <laughs> Didn't see. That's right, because his arms are totally... Ah, <laughs> okay. uh, confusing. Oh man, that is an ugly... Oh, why does it keep turning that? That's so weird. Maybe I don't know how to use this program. It's very possible. I don't. Oh. You know, you can move there those layers a... around? 
I Which can, ones? I can move the layers. Shit. Oh. Like, oh. Very here's, nice. Here's Ronnie's one in the back. It changes the outline a little bit. Oh, yeah, it kind of became like a blue color. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I need an ear. That's what we need over here. Perfect. It's a perfect ear. <laughs> it's a perfect drawing. <laughs> Kiss the chef. I like that it's a t-shirt, not an apron. <laughs> Yeah. Just what it's part of this guy's normal wardrobe, you know. It's really into the idea of kissing the chef. Oh damn. Oh, I love it. Oh my god. Um so Sam, you can move layers around? I can move layers. Oh, I around. can't choose them though. Okay. I didn't think about this. I was gonna say, can you get uh, could you get me a new layer? But that will not work. No, I think I can make a new layer for me. Oh, which would not oh! be helpful. Wait, I may have found it. Okay. <laughs> Bam. Hold on. Hold the phone. Okay, so I'm on top of your layer now, though. Um, where, where do you need layers to be? I can move them for you. Put me underneath all of the layers. All of them? Yeah, all I right. think so. The, the new one underneath all of them? Or do you want uh, the new one on top? Uh, underneath, uh, the new one I just made, underneath all of them. Okay. Gotcha. One of the weird red squigglies. There we go. Now it's now it's behind. Okay, thank you. Okay, cool. There we go. Whoa. Here, I'm just gonna help Ronnie out because I think um, part of the hand of his dude is being covered up. So I'm just gonna fill in the white again for you. I found some birds. They have a whole like little oh, clip yeah. art thing. They do. There's birds. Yeah. What? Yeah, they've got all kinds of weird stuff. What the fuck? Whoa. Yeah. What'd you think about that? It's my Spice Girls reference for the episode. <laughs> Do. <laughs> oh, up here. Okay. I'm 
not really drawing, I'm just masking. <laughs> they even have characters in here. I'm gonna put a big gun guy. Like a big gun guy, just like with big one stroke. Guy. Big gun guy. Look at this big gun guy. Where's the gun? Oh, I see him. Got a big gun. He's not afraid to make you want to kiss him. Right on the <laughs> lips. He just wants a little kiss. It's a little smooch. NBD. Oops. Okay, I've assisted with the arm situation. <laughs> Truly a hero. Oh yeah, you were talking about stuff. I got super wrapped up in this drawing. I'm having a blast, dude. What am I doing? Enjoying myself on my stream? Oh no, how dare you. Fucking incorrect. Fucking plebe shit. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so we, we've we talked about uh, a little bit about this, a little, about, a little bit about that. We talked about Reading, we talked about movies. Um... Okay, if a uh, you got a chance um, to yes. work with anybody, um, like in comedy and film, like if someone was like, if you had, uh, if I was your agent and you were like, and I was asking you, you know, <laughs> MS Paint Trash is really taken off. Uh, what's your next move? Who do you want to make a movie with? You have your choice. Anyone you want. Make a movie with someone? Uh, yeah. Like an MS Paint Trash movie? Sure. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's a hard question. Um, maybe uh, a, it being an MS Paint Trash movie limits... limits the choices I have. No, nah, say, say, say your meme page, uh, after, the, <laughs> you know, uh, your meme page goes absolutely nuts, goes absolutely viral, um, you know, 20 million views, something like that crazy, you know, uh, you're, they're, they're asking you, you know, uh, the industry is clamoring at your door. Oh, uh, probably Tim Heidecker, to be honest. So is this like the MS Paint Trash like uh, uh, biopic? Um, it wouldn't be a biopic. It would be like a. It would be like a, an animated film. With a story. Oh, I love that. What's the story? Do you, wanna... you know. Oh, I I have no idea. Uh. I want to like make like a short animated film, but I need a concept before I could even start it. You'd want to do it yourself, though. Um, I would attempt it, but uh, drawing on drawing like on MS Paint, like just the application, like I feel like uh, it would taste it would in a lot of ways it would take longer than drawing by hand but then again i could just like copy and paste a lot of stuff but it's uh harder to draw with a mouse than it is with a pencil yeah yeah no it, kidding it takes hours just to like uh like if i wanted to like 
put the effort to make something a little more detailed. It take like just to make like ten seconds of animation. It takes a a really long time. Yeah, days. I imagine. Have you ever uh, thought about stop motion? Um, I would love to do stop motion, but I've never. I don't know if I've ever even tried it before. That would be cool, though. I watched a Mad God kind of recently, and that made me want to start animating again. Oh, sick! Yeah, I haven't I haven't caught it yet, but um, I, yeah, I'm definitely aware of it. It's it's something I really am interested in. It's that's on Shutter. Yeah, Shutter. Yeah, I I need to get on there. Um, actually, oh yeah, Shutter. No. Shutter's probably the best streaming, one of the best streaming apps, I guess. You got a brand. It deal seems with that them, way. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you want yeah. to, Shutter, we're 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 open. Yeah. You know, throw us some of that Shutter money. Yeah, and I'll toss the bussy back for you. No lies. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Um, I I've seen Shutter take a lot of really big chances um, with different concepts that like they're funding the movies of like uh, Flying Lotuses, weird ass. What was that called? Um, Kuzo. Uh -huh. Is uh wait. I don't remember. I remember Flying Lotus having a movie. I just don't remember what it was. Yeah, I can't remember the title of it. That was such a wild... Uh, it's such a wild idea, you know? It's not really, like, a solid, like, uh, clear narrative. But um, it's still, you know, got the kind of funding that... Um, I mean, ultimately deserved. Uh, Flying Lotus is, in my opinion, one of the the greatest artist of the generation, really. Um, so it was really cool to see uh, somebody take a risk on, like, especially at the time when it was when it came out, because this was, I mean, he was still pretty, like, obscure, you know? I mean, he still is, but definitely to a much less degree than five years ago or whatever. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was quite a while ago. Yeah, he's got something else coming out soon. Um, I can't remember much of the details. I just I follow the Instagram, see him post stuff, and just good to see a uh, interesting human being working and like uh, thriving. You know, I I went to I I got to meet him one time, uh, thanks to a very uh, strange friend of mine. Uh, we saw him, me and Kat went to go see him and uh, Parliament Funkadelic and Thundercat all played together, I think, at the Fox in Oakland. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it was a really wild night, and the sound was absolute garbage. Um, I'm pretty sure that, like, no one did sound checks or something because no one sounded good other than uh, Flylo. Um, everyone else sounded like uh, a garbled mess. It was really weird. Headphones helped. But, uh, yeah, there was no way around the, uh, like, it was really difficult to enjoy basically any of the other acts, uh, which yeah. is too bad, because, I, I mean, one of the reasons I went was uh, Parliament Funkadelic, you know, They're one of my favorite bands of all time, and I was, like, really interested to see, like, some of their newer stuff that, like, dives even into more genres than, like, their classic material. Um, and yeah, they sounded like ass. It was it was the worst sound I had heard. But Flylo comes on, and the sound is absolutely perfect, pristine. Um, probably mixed his incredibly loud setup is probably part of the problem anyway. Um, but he he fucking put on a hell of a show. Um, watching kind of like the live mixing elements, him throwing like a bar or two in there every once in a while, just kind of like when he felt like it, uh, improvising and, uh, and all to like this big um, uh, video display that he had behind him. Uh, 
just incredible show. After the show, uh, we go outside and uh, we're chatting with our buddy who had uh, been our ride down. Um, they had eight and small squares of paper uh, before the show, um, and we're a little bit uh, we're a little bit goofy at that point, point. Um, and we're like trying to have a conversation with them, and they're kind of like bouncing all over the place, you know, hard to keep them on track on anything. Um, they disappear for a moment. Me and Katie, your, your cat, are just sitting outside the venue. Uh, chatting waiting for our ride to come back um and they're like they come back like kind of like almost running um and they're like uh you know kind of uh, like we were yeah uh they're kind of like saying a lot with their body that's hard to determine but behind him you know uh, a few paces behind him is um another person it's nighttime we can't tell who it is but as soon as they get like within a few feet of us we realize oh that's that's Flying Lotus. <laughs> um, <laughs> and our buddy had just, like, brought him over there to smoke. Like, had a, a bunch of blunts with him and... Or, am I allowed to say that? Sorry. Um, but had a bunch with him. And so we just sat there and, uh, and smoked with Flying Lotus outside this venue. Uh, and chatted him up. I told him about Boilermaker. I told him about Urameshi and... You know, I was like, we're on Facebook, and he laughed at me. <laughs> He's like, check us out, we're on Facebook. <laughs> um, uh, but he's he was a really nice dude. We we sat there and chatted for a minute, um, and uh, I was, like, wondering how we were going to get home. Obviously, our friend wasn't in any state to drive us. Uh, and I'm, like, kind of talking to my friend about this. I'm like, you know, it's kind of irresponsible. I don't know why you did this. <laughs> Like, I could drive your car home. Uh, but he was like, "No, nah, no, nah, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay out in the city and go to the after party. You should come." And then I, me and my partner both have anxiety. We're not into that. That's not our scene. Um, so uh, we were like, "No, nah, we really want to go home. It's late already. We're tired." Um, and they were like, "Okay, hold on one second. And they disappear again. And they come back, but they're not with anyone this time. They come back and they're like, "Okay, okay, follow me, follow me, follow me." They lead us into this this uh, venue, like, a couple of doors down. Like, literally just this hole-in-the-wall bar, like, uh, maybe a block away. Um, and we walk inside, and there's, like, this entire big band coming out. Like, tuba, trombone, all their instruments. Everyone's just coming out with equipment. And I'm like, I'm not going in there. What's going on? What, uh, the drummer comes out, um, and my buddy introduces us. They're like... Um, this is, you know, my buddy, uh, uh, their band has a big van, and they're going to give you guys a ride home to Sonoma County. <laughs> and I was like, sure, uh, okay, but that gets us to the place we live, but how are we going to get home from there? And we, we worked it out. We worked it out with the rest of that, this weird, um, oh man, I can't remember, I think it was the Black Sheep Brass Band. Um, and uh, ended up getting a ride home with them. Like, very interesting uh, group of folks. Some people that were much older, like maybe their 50s or possibly 60s. Then this drummer was probably like 19, maybe at the time. Um, eventually, we got home. But it was just like one of the most strange nights one of those nights where you're going to a show and everything happens wrong you know nothing happens right everything's yeah <laughs> um but definitely one worth remembering i'm glad i did not eat any little pieces of paper um yeah, let's uh, let's talk Iron Hearts for a minute. Yeah, so um, we also uh, uh, you have uh, one more game. You're going to be playing with uh, as Bluegill Billy uh, for the Iron Hearts, right? Yeah. What's yeah, that? I mean, I I might come back back into the game, but 
taking a little break for your, for your yeah. uh for your health and and uh well being. Totally understand. From, like, from the like the main game, at least. Like I I still want to do like one shots when you guys do those. Hell yeah. No, I, yeah, I mean, I know that Nerdcrafty is always trying to push forward, make different, uh, make uh, adjustments on things that we know we could be better. You know, we're only going to keep getting uh, uh, a little more sophisticated with what we're doing. So I think, you know, there's a potential where, um, like, I I just... I would love at some point in the future for us to have, like, a whole, like, nerdcrafty meetup day where we can, like, the whole crew can actually be in person for once. Um, uh, like, I know they got really close uh, a month ago to everyone playing in the Iron Hearts in person, but, like, yeah, it's been something I've been thinking about for a couple of months is having, like, a day where we meet up, like, either in Reading or maybe we meet up with Sam in uh, uh, Nevada um, y'all are always welcome to come down here, I mean, but I got a tiny little apartment, and all of you in here, that would be not fun for anyone, but, (laughs) (laughs) um, yeah, uh, I, I think that would be a lot of fun, and it would give us the opportunity to, uh, possibly shoot another movie, which I am desperate for the opportunity to do that again with all y'all. Oh, yeah, I, I would love to, I would love to make another movie. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, and if you are listening to us talk about this and are are interested in uh potentially helping us get to these these big goals that we have, these aspirations we have for, for nerd crafty, um, you know, we, we, we've got a Patreon that uh just happened to have added a couple of uh what are they called? Not goals, um Perks, yes. Just add it. Just added a couple of perks on there. Uh, definitely give it a uh, look. I think we're gonna get the uh, the link in the chat. Link is in the chat, my friends. Um, please give it a look. Uh, see if the perks sound like stuff that is fun for you. And of course, anything that you are able to contribute, we are so happy to get. Um, and will help us. Yeah, like I was saying, uh, get to these these big goals that we have, um, and not to mention, hopefully, uh, at some point start, um, you know, we'll, we'll not all be broke artists, uh, working for free, desperately trying to, uh, make this, make this big dream happen, you know? I just, we're better off together, that's for sure. And I, I'm super happy that, uh, we found this little community to work with. Man, this piece is, I've never played D and D in person before either. I only started doing it uh, through the Discord stream with you, right? Jack and Sam. Yeah. Let me. So now that um, it's been a while. Like, did you prefer the party that was just me and you and Sam and uh, uh, Ezreal? Uh, overall, yeah. Just because. It was uh, a lot less people. I, I don't know. I it was just a a bit simpler. Yeah, and and we were still in Nianzaru, so we hadn't really like in, experienced any like major combat or anything like that. Uh, oh yeah, we we like we were playing for a long time, and like we barely like barely got out of this the main city like until like. Uh, Whenever we uh, join forces with uh, everyone else, or like your other game, yeah, <laughs> I I am a little bit a uh, little bit heartbroken for that that campaign because um, I was having so much fun with uh, just the four of us and having both of these games that I was able to kind of like go back and forth between um, uh, because the differences were so wild. I mean, you guys don't probably... Sam probably knows most of this at this point, but, like, I don't think you know that, like, a lot of the stuff that we experienced, the Iron Hearts had so easy. Like, we spent, like, sessions trying to get that meeting at the, the 
with uh, Wakanga, right? Ironheart, they <laughs> board, they get in Nyanzaru, and they're just welcomed in by the royals, by the 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 merchant uh, princes or whatever of Nyanzaru. They get like you know the the grand entrance. They get to use the royal uh, uh, docks, you know, just absolute pleasure treatment. Whereas we're just like, you know fighting to even get in line to get the little flyers for Musharib and shit. <laughs> so it was really interesting kind of playing both games, having like, almost like a, an, this almost like uh, social statement that Zach may or may not have intended, but I was definitely reading into because like, here's our party, you know, uh, the Tiriyiki 10, uh, in the, you know, all just starting out, low levels, no money, um, kind of like having to struggle for everything um, to make any kind of ground. We're fighting for it, and the Iron Hearts are just like already wealthy, have their own castle basically, and are just like, uh, "Welcome, <laughs> we'll give you everything you need." <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, when I take a break, like, if all I'm saying is when Charin returns, or if he ever returns, um, I have to know about that in advance. Yeah. Yeah, that... Because Billy it... has to see Ch uh, Charin again. Yeah, best friend meetup. I, I, I definitely want that to happen. I hope, that's like, so much of why I've been trying to get the party to uh, push forward is I know that Charin, not to mention everybody else in Midgard, is like, um, you know, heads on the chopping block, essentially. And I I really liked that character, and I liked that we had, like, a dynamic worked out and everything. Like, um, and then, and poor Charin, you know, gets shot right out of the air. <laughs> That, I don't know. It's only right. I mean, it It wouldn't really make sense if... Yeah, I guess Chompy would have to go with me. Yeah, and, and frankly, Chompy is like... He's so vulnerable. I don't want Chompy yeah. to die. He's, he's done his uh, duty. He's done amazing. It's, it's kind of incredible that we got Chompy in the first place. <laughs> um, it was like just a lucky uh, animal handling role for you, right? Yes. Er, uh, wait, what do you mean? I I know I have like Chompy as a separate, uh, like a separate uh, game card. Or I don't know what you call it, but character sheet. Yes, character sheet. Yeah, yeah. Um. When you when we first met Chompy, he was like the it was at the Thundering Lizard in Nyanzaru and um Yeah, so the... so my character oh, yeah. knew Hugh Hackenstone and apparently the dinosaur was supposed to be for him. So she ended up signing for it or taking responsibility for it, but my animal handling sucked. <laughs> That's what happened. Okay. Can they was hear you? Chompy? Yeah, they can hear me. Okay. I, I came what? back on my Chompy Chompy was wasn't he, like, outside, like, in the, uh, I, I don't yeah, want to call it a barn. Yeah, somebody, the, the delivery person had brought him, like, to the inn, and, like, the, the person running it was, like, they had to, like, wake us up and get our attention because, like, they were trying to drop it off, and, like, <laughs> they refused to take it into the stable unless they knew, like, someone was responsible for it or something like that. That's right. And then and then Ronnie rolls high with animal handling. Yep, so. And we got to keep Chompy. Yeah. What a beautiful thing. Well I, I, I don't I know you gotta get out of here. Um so I don't wanna keep you longer than you than you wanna stay. Yeah, I gotta get going. Alright, man. Well it's been great chatting with you. Um Yeah, thanks I, for having I, me. Yeah, uh, we're gonna do my, this again. Uh yeah, definitely. Um my 
meme page is on Instagram and on Facebook. I ha- I'm having some troubles accessing it on Facebook right now. So it's mostly on Instagram, but it's MS Paint Trash. Uh, and yeah, like and follow if you want. And Gavin with Goofies is on YouTube, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't want to pay money, or I don't know how to, like, put or set the podcast, or, like, you have to do something with, like, an RSS feed, and our podcast is on YouTube, so it's not very accessible, but you could find our podcast on YouTube if you want. Gavin with the Goofies. Oh, really? I don't. I don't know if you want Gavin. Gavin with the goofies. Is, <laughs> we might. Yeah, it's uh, it might uh, might be too stupid. <laughs> oh, buddy. All right. Well, love you. We'll talk to you soon, man. All right. Love you too. See you later, Weston. See you later, Sam. Yeah. Thank you. Back. Hey, and I'm just gonna let everyone enjoy this beautiful art for the next like 15 minutes of this uh, of this um, live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, you let your eye wander, and it will find you a new focus. Um, in short order, I I just. Like, I didn't draw very much. I was just in awe of watching <laughs> Ronnie work. I, He just... His uh, cursor barely stopped moving. Um, I... That guy's something else. I, I Let me know in the chat uh, if we should have Ronnie on again. Maybe we'll do, like, some drawing challenges or um, go back-to-back on something. Um, maybe... Shoot. Maybe I'll just give Ronnie my... Uh, channel for a day and i'll be the guest and he can (laughs) he can make us a meme or something uh yeah i was such a great talk um i would be curious to find out what would happen if um if we gave you two the same prompt and just had you you, drawing side by side that would be amazing you would get two very different products uh i i'm I, we've thought about doing, like, we're big fans of Drawfee, me and Sam, um, and we've thought about doing kind of like Drawfee style, kind of like drawing prompt challenges and things like that. Um, I'm, I'm super interested in the idea. I just, you know, we haven't, uh, if you have prompts that you would like us to draw, please hit us in the chat, hit us in our comments on YouTube, uh, fuck, DM me, I don't give a shit. Yeah, um, October is <laughs> coming, right? Yeah, October is coming. Um, I have been thinking about doing a prompt uh, list, a drawing prompt list. Like, I participated in a couple of, uh, you can find on my Instagram, uh, I've participated in October drawing challenges for the last couple of years, um, and I really love them. Uh, This year, I wasn't, like, super into a lot of the uh, prompt lists that I was seeing. Um, My go-tos were underwhelming a little bit um no offense to them but you know it wasn't it wasn't hitting me in any inspirational way which they usually do um so i thought about making my own um Mm -hmm. i've got one you can find on my instagram stories i probably won't keep it the way it is because it is just shit tier memes uh start to finish (laughs) all 31 days maybe that'll be just an alternate one that i i let specific people know about um i don't know uh again Feel free to DM me. Let me know what you think about it if you see it in my stories. It is, it's not in close friends or anything, so public is able to see it. Um, I think I also posted it on my Twitter. Can't remember, though. Um, oh, right. I can't hide my Twitter here. Never mind. Uh, I don't have one. It doesn't exist. La, 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 la. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, you can find some of my old drawings there uh, on Instagram. Uh and yeah I, I so yeah i really like the halloween drawing challenges and sam uh gave me the idea to do a nerdcrafty kind of inspired um 
uh, drawing prompt list. And I thought that was a really excellent idea. We'll get some Willow drawing prompts. We'll get some D&D drawing prompts. We'll get some, uh, maybe some, uh, the, uh, drawing prompts describing some of the places we did in Sam's map making, uh, live streams. Um, talk about, uh, <laughs> Drawing from inspiration from the drag games and from or drag oh, game man. and uh, <laughs> some of our one other one shots we've done. Um, you one know, of the we, days one of the days has to be Blue Gill Billy. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, yeah, definitely Blue Gill Billy is icon. Um, if you haven't seen Ronnie's Blue Gill Billy, I mean, if you have. Well, you haven't watched our D&D stream, and you better go do that every other Sunday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, right here at twitch.tv slash nerdcraft. Um, yeah, so uh, Ronnie's Blue Go Billy is incredible. Ronnie, actually, if you are a follower of MS Paint Trash, you know that Blue Go Billy is kind of a takeoff of Boot Glass Billy, which was an OC of Ronnie's from years ago, I think at the start of the meme page. It's exactly what it sounds like. Like, you know those glasses that are shaped like boots? Imagine four of those, but on a goat. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's just another example of Ronnie's creative uh, mind and why I absolutely fucking love it. <laughs> um, you know, just these seemingly, you know, uh, random kind of choices that that don't lead you to random places. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself partially at least at this point. <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah. Uh, I, uh, but yes, uh, Bluegill Billy and Blue, Boot Glass Billy, even though they are a frog and a goat, are in some ways kind of related. Um, so definitely go look at MS Paint Trash on uh, on instagram and on facebook uh you can find uh if you're really clever you can find me on facebook but i don't really add any people anymore and because you should, you should go find nerd crafty on facebook yeah that's a way better idea go find nerd crafty on <laughs> facebook um i i contribute to things there occasionally yeah and, uh, and that uh, prompt list will be <clears throat> up there Definitely. So if you're following uh, somewhere on social media, then you will know when it comes out. Perfect. Thank you, Sam. That's no exactly problem. exactly <laughs> the, the vibe. <sighs> what else? So we, we talked about the Patreon. We plugged all the stuff. Yeah, it's a lot um, of stuff, too. So yeah, much more stuff um, than when we started. I guess, you know, I'll just say... Um, uh, you know, my Venmo's on the screen. I, you know, times are tight <laughs> for all of us. Uh, but, you know, any anything helps. Uh, if you can swing me a, a buck, it helps, you know. Uh, if you enjoyed the art, consider tipping the artist. Yes, I, I do art, and you don't... Uh, I don't know if you know this. If you make art, nobody uh, wants to pay you to do it. <laughs> um, they will try and get it for free at all times. And, you know, we're kind of enabling here. That's that's what we're doing a little bit. Um, more free art, but that's because we uh, we love doing it, you know? You and know, we, we also make better art that's not free if you want to pay us. It's very true. Um, you can see some of the commission work I've done, and uh, you can compare it to some of the free work I've done. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's a... It's a it's just something that I'm passionate about. It's something I'm I love, and frankly, I would I would do it for free forever. Uh, I don't want to though. <laughs> I genuinely really hate the idea of the fact that I might have to do that forever. Um, I ideally but, we would love to do these things and also be able to eat and live in a place. <laughs> yeah, it's a novel concept. Uh, it used to happen for artists, but no, you know, um, I think it a, a while ago. Uh, a lot of people with the worst intentions were like, you know, they should just starve. Uh, you know, if, for any number of reasons that have nothing to do with their art. <laughs> we should just 
in fact, let them starve. Uh, you can, of course, find all kinds of... Uh, <laughs> look into all the uh, wonderful things that have happened in the entertainment industry in the last hundred years or so. Um, if you haven't, I recommend it, because it's it's there's... Oh, boy. <laughs> but prepare yourself, though. Um, it's not an easy history to read. Eh... You know, it's the, it, in many ways, the interesting thing about um, entertainment and media um, and the labor struggles contained there is that, for some reason, uh, it's it's often been disconnected from major labor movements of its time. But with what we've seen with the buyout of Warner Brothers by Discovery um, and the uh, fallout, uh, I guess is the most polite way I could put that. Yeah, that's uh, nice. As a consequence that's of nice. all of Discovery's, um, the aftermath. Really, really bad. Oh, okay, uh, mishandling. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I I just I see nothing but artists upset. Artists that are like, you know, some people lost their lost years of their lives to work that is just never going to be seen mm-hmm. again and, legally, um, and that. That's that's wrong, and that's got a lot of people mad. And you know, my my thing, especially coming from the punk scene, has always been uh, the idea of collectivism and mutual aid and working together, uh, doing it ourselves. You know, uh, drawing partnerships where they're where they are to be found um, with the people that are in your community and people that you care about, and just continuing to uh and just working together uh to meet bigger goals than you're able to achieve on your own um nerd crafty is uh and a big part um something that i'm very glad to be a part of because that's just something that i have always latched onto. um i have done and said too many things in this life for me to probably work at a major media conglomerate um you know i i'm not uh hireable in the same way someone like uh the very talented Timothy Chalamet, uh, <laughs> whose reputation is much more, uh, an online presence is probably much more squeaky clean than my own. But that's not who I am, you know? I'm not squeaky clean. But that doesn't mean I don't deserve to live. You know or what? work. Timothy Chalamet or, or work is probably in the field not that, squeaky clean either. He's just quiet about it. The public image, that's all I'm saying. But mm-hmm. uh, I just still deserve to work yeah. and live in this world um, as an artist. Um, and it shouldn't hinge upon my political opinions, my opinions on corporate overreach, my opinions on uh, uh, on media, my, my media criticisms, things like that shouldn't bar me from working. Mm-hmm. Um, the kinds of art I like to make shouldn't bar me from labor. Yeah, and, and the I'm... fact that it is gives you a very good idea of what we deal with as artists in this country from an outside perspective, which a lot of people kind of think about artists um, like in a way that I don't think is human. Um, you know, we're uh, objectified, I guess, if you want to look at it that way, I, for lack of a better word, you know. Um, and I, uh, I look forward to a future where uh, artists see that the industry does not care about them and will only work with them under the most uh, extreme uh, conditions that only benefit the industry, uh, the, the conglomerates. And uh, I look forward to a world where we... Uh, join hands and seize the means of production right out from under them because it's right here. Um, you know, you're holding the phone, you're working at a computer. We can make media together, baby. Yeah, absolutely. And and the fact is, if you enjoy any type of entertainment, there is an artist working behind that. In in reality, probably several artists working behind it. So you know, sure. consider where the things you enjoy are coming from and who's actually making them, instead of just who's paying for them. I think it's a lot easier to see uh, that uh, the things that most people like to believe are not political, or say shouldn't be political, are always inherently political. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, that is about my time. Uh, it is 5.30, and I'm going to start uh, saying goodbye to you, kind folks. Thank you so much for showing up. 
Um, again, follow the plugs. They're in the uh, chat. Um, for MS Paint Trash, for Gavin with the Goofies, for Lava Submersible on Instagram and on TikTok. Um, follow Nerd Crafty on the social medias. We're everywhere. You can find us. Uh, listen to our podcast, Ignore the Bird, Follow the River. We have another very special, uh, the second half of our very special um, Willow one-shot coming out very soon uh, in the next uh, week. Uh, well, a week from this Thursday. Yeah, and so it's going to be September 8th for that one. September 8th, we've got episode 2 coming, yeah. So uh, keep your eyes out. We've got even more stuff that uh, uh, Sam's been working very hard on in the background. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say. Um, we, we can say that there is a preview of it coming very soon. There you go. So keep your eyes on our YouTube, uh, Nerdcrafty, uh, Nerdcrafty Media. Yep. Nerdcrafty Media on YouTube. Uh, keep your eyes out there. We will have that uh, preview coming to you on a very special chat. project soon. YouTube's and, in the uh, chat. There you go. YouTube is in the chat. And yeah, thank you all so much for coming out and showing your support for us. Uh, I wish you all the best. Have a lovely day. I've been Lava Submersible, and you've been a nice audience. Thank you so much. <laughs>